a fascinating story. In the book of Acts chapter 10, we find this man by the name Cornelius. Let me just go to that chapter and give you a few thoughts as we are preparing our hearts to be touched by God this afternoon. Let me give you some thoughts on that man, Cornelius. The Bible says in that chapter, there was cert a certain man, we can go back from verse number one, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of a band called the Italian band. Now this man is not a Jew, is a Roman centurion. A devout man, a man who feared God with all his house. Now, these are some of the most precious credentials that anybody could ever have. A man who was devout. Now, this is not a self, uh, what do you call, expression of himself. It is God talking about him. It's one thing for us to talk about ourselves because we are sometimes very kind to ourselves. But it's one another thing for God to talk about us. And, and this is God's credential about this man. He's a devout man. And one that feared God with all his house. A man, a family man, a man who was a leader of his house. Feared God with all his house. Which gave much alms to the, to his own, to the people. That means he was a generous man supporting the people of Israel. Now if you look at the word, it's not... People, it is the people. Wherever you see that word, the people, in the Bible, it talks about the people of Israel. Now, this man loved the people of Israel. He was a Jew lover. And prayed to God always. Now, that's beautiful. And, to, and prayed to God always. Now, he saw in a vision, evidently, about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming unto him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid. And said, What is it, O Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy arms are come up. Now, I want everybody to know this. Your prayers and what you do, as a token of your love, it reaches heaven. It has come up for a memorial. Now, that's a word. That means what you do for God will stay as a memorial. That means even after you pass on from this world, you, you die, God says what you did will continue to remain as a memorial before me. What an amazing fact. A memorial. If you go to a place, we can see memorials of, of events and people that have lived and some people that had some special significance in history. And God says what you do is coming as a memorial before me now I want you to look at the next verse and now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon whose surname is Peter I want to give you two or three truths from this beautiful chapter it's amazing you know I love to read the old time writers and in, in my time of reading I was able to get hold of an ancient commentary I think written somewhere in the early 19th century or maybe even mid-18, called the People's Bible Commentary. A man by the name Parker. And this is what he says, a beautiful thing he says about, in connection to this chapter. He says, there are dramatic chapters in the Bible. That means if you get into the chapter, you get the sense something is about to happen. And then he says there are three such dramatic chapters in the Bible. The first chapter is the first chapter in the Bible, Genesis 1. Look at that chapter for a moment. What movement, what continual and growing excitement, how worlds were made and light was parted and arrangements are completed as if some stupendous. Every time you hear the word God said, let it be and let it be and you see this beautiful creation taking shape in the most amazing manner and the most powerful, the manifestation of God's word that brings forth creation. You get a certain sense. Now there's no rest in the first chapter. 
You know, from the beginning till the end, the palpitations will run high and you will get this amazing sense. All this record of creation is geared towards something. There's a story that is about to come. And then you will find that secret in those words. And God said, let us now make man. The entire creation and the excitement and the abundant sense of, 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 of something such, 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 such powerful, stupendous you know, action on the part of God and how the entire universe reacts to the word of God. It culminates in that one word. The entire creation and everything made is coming geared towards one word. And God said, let us make man. Number two, it says the next chapter in the Bible would be the, Bi the first chapter in the New Testament. Matthew. Why is that important? Look at that. You know, the first chapter of Matthew, if the, the first chapter of Genesis was about creation, the first chapter of, of, of the New Testament was about history. Something is happening. When you read that first chapter, you know an important event is going to be assured in yes. to human history. It starts with he beget him and, 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 and Abraham beget Isaac and Isaac beget Jacob. And Jacob, sometimes you think, what's the point behind all this? And there's a certain mundane nature to all these names and some of the names are names that we can't even pronounce. What's the point of knowing? It's like somebody say, I was like reading the telephone directory. He beget him, this man had this son, this son. But the way it is beautifully arranged and with the number 14 as Matthew holds on to that supernatural element that is seen in all this narr narrative of this genealogy of, 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 of the patriarchs, of, from Adam probably, of, from Abraham. You know, at the end, when you read that, you get this suspenseful thinking or thought. Something is about to happen. And then it says, as a son of Joseph came Emmanuel. His name shall be called Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sin. Look at that. An exciting chapter but ends with the greatest, the most greatest event in all of human history. Man, God becoming man. And they say, and this man says, the third most dramatic chapter in the entire Bible will be chapter 10 of Acts. Why is that so important? I don't think there's any other chapter in the Bible with so many visions and angels and, and trances and, 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 and revelation and, and dreams and, 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 and such, you know, beautiful, somebody's prejudice being broken and Peter going and preaching. Something exciting is happening. But then if you are careful, you will know this is leading to something. And what is the secret that this chapter is holding up in, in all this beautiful, uh, you know, events that are happening? If you look at this word, this is a word. This is a word. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Hallelujah. Next verse. But in every nation, every nation, I think for the first time in the Bible, the gospel is transcending the Jewish people. And moving to every nation. Yeah. And that's the reason today we have people from Philippines, India, Africa, and other nations worshiping God in this place. Somebody shout a hallelujah from every nation. And that's the reason this, this story, this chapter is so dramatic. I would like to continue on the beautiful nature of this chapter. Please listen closely. You know, if you look at this chapter... Everything is so supernatural. An angel coming down at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon to meet with a man. And then at the same time, almost the same time, the man they're supposed to call 
by the name Peter is having a dream in his own dwelling place. He was about to eat food and because the food got delayed, he went to have a nap and in the afternoon he gets this beautiful dream of something coming upon a, a tray and he saw all the wild creatures and the creeping creatures and all kinds of animals on that particular tray and God says, rise up and eat Peter. And Peter says to God, God, I've never eaten anything that is unclean. Never eaten. I'm a Jew. It's against the laws of my religion to eat what is unclean. And here comes the thunderous voice of God's convicting answer to Peter. God said, what God has made clean, you shall not call it unclean. And I am standing here with that message today. We have a group of young people and God speaks over them. What God has made clean. Can I get a witness somewhere here? What God has made clean, no man shall call it unclean. Doesn't matter what their background was. Doesn't matter what kind of a situation they, that they were part of. Doesn't matter what background they came from. Maybe the messy and the most, 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 most colorful life in all its sense that they might have had until now. But God in his holiness, in his righteousness, righteousness in his mercy is declaring some of these young people holy before God. They are no more to be unclean. They are declared holy before God. What an amazing truth. But the way God does it, the supernatural elements that are involved in it, I will come back to that. But let me just say one word that's so important. Listen closely. One word. You know the word Joppa, where Simon Peter is staying, that's the place where God gives this dream to Peter and said, Peter, go to the house of Cornelius, the Gentile man, and preach the gospel to him. And Peter, it was very difficult for him to go, but he obeyed God. How many of you know, centuries before this happened, another prophet came to Joppa. By the name Jonah. Same instruction. Go to the Gentiles. But at Joppa. Jonah disobeyed. He went away. But God is reversing the circle. Oh, the cycle. I love that. Once upon a time a prophet. Breaks God's command. Disobeys God and moves away from Joppa. By disobeying God. After many years, in the same place called Joppa, God makes another man with the same instruction to obey God's command. Let me make this very clear. Our God is a God of second chances. Come on, somebody lift up your voice and shout hallelujah. If there was a time in your life that you disabled God, that you moved away from him, he's giving you back a chance to obey him this afternoon. Can somebody shout an amen? That's my God, a God of second chances. Wow, I love that. You know, when I saw that, my heart leaped for joy. Think about it. Centuries might go, but God... If he wanted a prophet to obey him, he brings another prophet, another servant of God, at the same place, with the same command to go to Gentiles, and made him obey. You know what? I want to encourage all the people, all the young people that are getting baptized. You can list maybe hundreds of times in your lives that you disobeyed God. But here is the beauty of God's dealing with man. Amen. He's giving you a chance for you to declare. Because Jesus said, those who obey, let them get baptized. And this is the afternoon that you are getting a chance to declare, I am obeying Christ. I want to obey Christ. That's the most beautiful thing. God of second chances. I want to give you two or three important points and then we are going to pray. Number one, you know, this would be the 
very obvious question that people might have. Here is a man who's devout from God's point of view, a man who's so holy, God-fearing, a man who's so generous, a man who loves God, a man who sees visions, who's pray, who prays every day. But does that mean that man is saved? Even the people who are you know, saved and, and feel that they're so close to God, don't get all of what this man had. But my question is this. With all this beautiful character, beautiful quality in this man, does that mean that this man was saved? You know, there's a common sense among people. Some of be a good man. And some of do the right thing. I'm not saying those are bad things. God honors it. But I want to make a statement here. At the end of the day, it's not our good deeds that brings us to God or takes us to heaven. It's only what Jesus did. Now, I'll give you, I'll give you a truth here. I'll give you a truth. Chapter 11 and verse number 14. Now, this... Look at those words. This is Cornelius' words repeated by Peter. What did the angel say to, to Cornelius? You shall call Peter who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy household shall be saved. Now that's the beauty of it. You know, God knew this man is a wonderful man. He knew that this man is an honorable man. So God doesn't want him to perish. God said, bring my servant. And I'm going to give you words that will help you to get saved. And I want you to understand this. This moment, it's the love that God has for you. That enabled you to hear the word of God. By which you're going to be saved. I want to give you two or three things. Number one, you know, with all that we have, we still need to accept Jesus Christ in order to be saved Amen. its salvation is not through anything else it's through jesus christ and those of you can say joyfully today yes i received jesus christ into my life and that's the reason i am saved hallelujah it's only because of jesus that we are saved can you give a lord a praise offering in the hearts of the lord salvation is only through jesus christ yes and he has got angelic visitation. He's a man of tremendous credential in the sight of God. But still, God gives him an opportunity for him to say, I need Jesus. Number two, let me make this very clear. You know, God has sent an angel to talk to him in the mid-afternoon. Still instructs him to call Peter. To talk to him the rest of the gospel. You know why? The gospel preaching is not allotted to the angels. The gospel preaching is not given to any angel. God didn't call an angel to preach the gospel. He called human beings. People like you and me. To preach the gospel to every person in the whole world. Hallelujah. I thought about it. You know what? After Jesus died on the cross, all it would have taken God was to appoint Gabriel, the archangel. And Gabriel would fly over India, fly over Canada with a trumpet in his mouth and say, boop, 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 boop. All the people in this, in this land, listen to this. Jesus Christ died for you. And this is your salvation hour. You know what? God said, Angel Gabriel might have asked God, God, can I do it? I can save the whole world in few minutes. If somebody is not getting saved, I will scare him to salvation. Come on. God said, no, that's not my plan. And then the angel said, what is your plan then? God said, I have appointed some people. God said, and an angel said, who? God said, Jesus said, Peter. What? Peter? The one who denied you? The one who rejected you? Peter? 
And the angel asks, Jesus, God, Jesus, okay, that's your plan A. But if that plan fails, do you have a plan B? Jesus said, no. <laughs> that's the only plan that I have. You know why? The people who have received salvation must preach Amen. the salvation. Amen. No angel can say, God is my savior. But I can say, Jesus Christ, save me. Come on, hallelujah. And this afternoon, the message of the gospel is given to human beings, to people who are afraid and fragile, fragile like, like, like us. And this afternoon, we are the ones carrying this gospel. How many of you are happy this afternoon? Jesus Christ saved me and made me the preacher of this wonderful gospel. Wonderful truth. If you believe that, lift up your voice and give a Lord a praise offering. This is is my joy. God has appointed me to bring this good news. And let me tell you, people of God, this afternoon when I stand here, when Pastor Dino would stand, all of us, when we stand and see these young people standing up for Jesus, how oh, we can say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. It was not because of our smartness. It's not because of our eloquence. It's not because of our qualification. It's just because we receive this love and we share this love with people who need to receive this love and God did the rest hallelujah and this afternoon I believe angels are going to join yes. they're going to stand around and say Jesus thankfully your plan is working so it's always the salvation is given not to the message is not given to an angel some of you are still waiting for an angel to come and tell you get saved don't wait we are here to say that. <laughs> That's my job. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's time to get saved. Jesus is coming soon. Yes. Number two, you know, I want to give you this truth. You can have angelic visitation, you can have all those good credentials, but what saves you? Verse number 43 of 10, chapter 10, 43. To him given all the prophet witness that through his name it's not our generous giving it's not even our prayer it's not angels visiting us it's not being a devout man that saves us it is a name of jesus christ can I get a witness somewhere here? It's only through the name of Jesus Christ. How many of you can declare this afternoon, I am saved. I am here today not because of my righteousness. It's because of the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe that, I want you to put your hands together as a sign of your faith. It's only because of the name of Jesus Christ. Whosoever believeth in him, I want to declare today, it's not a church. It's not a group. It's not even what you do. It's not your good deeds. It takes only one thing for you to do, to get saved. Believe on the name of Jesus Christ. That's all. Believe on the name of Jesus Christ. And declare to the Jesus, I believe you died for me. I believe because of your sacrifice on the cross, I am saved. I believe your blood washes me from all uncleanliness. I believe when I accept you, my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I believe heaven's door opened for me because of Jesus. And those of you can say this afternoon, that's my joy. I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. And the day I asked him to come into my life, he came into my life. He took control over my life. And today I know I'm saved because of Jesus. Only those people can you shout a hallelujah. It's only in in the name of Jesus that we are saved. Number four, and this is my greatest prayer. If I have one prayer for these young people that are going to get saved, and, and I'm sorry, baptized, and people who will be joining them in the days to come, this is my prayer from the life of Cornelius. Verse number 44. When Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Ghost a devout man a man whose prayers reaches heaven who has interactions with angels 
But even that man, for him to lead a victorious life, he needs something called the Holy Spirit. You know what? When these young people would leave this baptism tank out of the water, the Bible says when Jesus came out of his baptism, he was tempted by the devil. They will have all kinds of struggle. They will have to face their old friends. They will have a lot of questions that the enemy will put into their minds. But I want to declare today, from this day onwards, the Bible says when Jesus got baptized, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And the Spirit was with him when he went through the wilderness. And I declare it in the name of Jesus. The young people that have decided to follow Jesus in baptism, they're not going to have a victorious life based on their smartness and how qualified they are. On their self-will, it's going to be the power of the Holy Spirit that's going to make them victorious. How many of you want to give them a big God bless you this afternoon and say it's the power of the Holy Spirit that's going to make you a strong believer. You're going to go from strength to strength. You're going to go from glory Glory to glory. You're going to be a victorious Christian in the name of Jesus. We are not prophesying failure in your life. We are prophesying that many of you are going to stand up for Jesus in the days to come and say it's not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord, says the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Come on, people of God. We are going to pray for these young people. When they're going to this world, they're not going alone. I hear a thunder voice in my heart right now the Lord is prophesying over you when you leave this tank when you leave this church this afternoon you are not going alone the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead <laughs> he's coming with you he's coming with you if you believe that shout a hallelujah you are going with the power of the Holy Ghost Oh, Rabbi Shandala, Rabbi Shande, keep praying. Brothers and sisters, you are going to go with the power of the Holy Spirit. I know temptations are strong. I know evil is strong out there. I know all kinds of addictions and all kinds of vices are powerful enough to take you astray from the path of righteousness. But I also know greater... Somebody is shout greater, greater is the power of the Holy Spirit. Greater is the power that will help you to withstand all the powers of evil. Imagine a man who was such a devout man, a man who was such a man of prayer, a man who had angelic visitation. Even this man needs the power and the infilling. Of the Holy Spirit. I want to bless you with this. My heart trembles. Like a surgeon who is doing a very delicate surgery. As a knife is held in his hand. And he knows a small mistake. Can destroy or kill that man. Lying on that table. I know as I stand here, I'm dealing with your eternal life. I tremble. But I also know it's not the power of this world. It's not anybody's assistance. Thank God for everybody that's going to support you. But it will be, it will be the blessed. Amen. Young men, I want to tell you, there will come a time you have a need you're trying to get hold of Pastor Dino. He's not available. You're trying to get hold of somebody. He's not available. But that moment, you will sense the blessed Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And I promise you, he will not leave you. Yes. Not even for a minute. Until, until he transforms you to the image of Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, one of these days, your Savior and my Savior is about to come. And we'll all be taken. Yes. 
And when we shall see him, we shall be like him. Come on, hallelujah. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Every human being saved by the grace of God needs the power of the Holy Spirit for a victorious living. And then, in the next passage, after the Holy Spirit came upon them, here's the verse. Oh, this is the word. Verse number 46. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized? The only reason we are allowing you or we want you to get into this water is with that assurance that today it's not the water that's going to help you. It's the one thing that happens in your life, the blessed Holy Spirit. Baptism is an announcement of a new life. But it does not help you to maintain a new life. It's only the Holy Spirit. Come on, hallelujah. What are you declaring in this baptism service? You're declaring, my old self is dead. And from this day onwards, I'm a new man.